Okay, so uh, we are live on Zoom. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, super interesting webinar, which is about studying biology and chemistry in Germany. And as you know, from the series of subject webinars, we are never alone. Uh, so we have our special guest today, to which, whom we, I will uh, quickly introduce. But first, about myself. So my, I, my name is Georgi, and I will today be a host but more of a moderator, I would say, because we have two great hosts today to, to whom the floor <laughs> will belong. And Eileen, my friend from my German university also, who will be uh, moderating and she will be answering your questions. Also, she as well uh, in the Q&A. So regarding the Q&A, quickly, some technical issues uh, regarding today's webinar. So you, dear attendees, cannot use the chat. Uh, function, but you are always welcome to send your question in the Q&A section, which you can see in the below part of the Zoom next to participants. So there you can send us your questions and one of us will get uh, to them as soon as possible. And one more, one suggestion from our side is that if your question is not general, but is directed at one of the present programs, please mention it uh, when you are sending this question so that we don't lose your question and then the appropriate person answers this question and you get the best possible answer. Okay, now I will quickly ask Eileen to introduce her, uh, my German university. And then I will take over with introduction of our guests, some general information about studying in Germany and then our guests will start their presentations. Please Eileen. All right, thank you Georgi and thank you for all of you. Um, who are joining us on Zoom. And thank you to our special guests. Uh, my name is Eileen. I was once an international student in Bremen. <laughs> and uh, now I am based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I would like to just share a little bit about my German university with you guys before uh, we start with the presentation. Uh, so we are Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. Uh, and even though we have the word university in our name, we are not a university and we are not a scholarship foundation. So it's important just to clarify that. Uh, this is our homepage. I will send you the link uh, soon in the chat. Uh, and this is the short version of our study finder where you can find over 2,200 uh, study programs in English. Uh, but if you click here, uh, you will find the more uh, the extended version with all the filters that you can apply to make your search um, based on your interests and uh, qualifications. And we also have more than 70 comprehensive articles about the German higher education landscape for international students. So there is a lot of useful information and link to external resources that you will need in the process of applying and uh, applying to a university or applying for a scholarship or uh, for a visa, applying via UniAssist, and a lot of important uh, information. And we also have uh, weekly webinars. Um, today is a subject-specific webinar, but we also have more general webinars about application strategies, COVID-19 updates, uh, scholarships, UniAssist, visa, and much more, so make sure to check out the upcoming webinars and register for the ones you think um, will be good for you. And we are very proud uh, to have an international team. Uh, we are based in Hamburg, but uh, our team is uh, located all over the world. And we are also a very diverse and international team. And besides uh, offering um, your, our services in English. Uh, we also have um, some of our resources already available in Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, Italian, and also Chinese. Um, 
so I guess that's it on my side. Like Georgi said, I will be in the background answering the questions, the general questions in the Q&A section. And uh, uh, pay attention to the chat because we will share very important links about the programs, um, the Master of Sciences that will be presented here today, and also about the general um, steps that uh, you need to apply and everything. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you in our upcoming webinars. Thank you very much, Eileen, so for this wonderful introduction. So as she said already, she's in the she's behind the scene and you can already send your questions, dear friends. And now it's my part. And uh, then we will quickly move to the most important part. So let me quickly share with you my screen, dear friends. So as you may know already, as Eileen also mentioned, today we are talking about biology and chemistry in Germany. And let me briefly introduce to you our agenda today. So we have two special guests from two universities. Uh, one university is University of Bremen, and we have a Master of Science in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, which will be presented by Professor Dr. Janine Kirstein. And by the way, as uh, Eileen also mentioned, uh, I also studied in Bremen, so Today, <laughs> I'm really happy also to see uh, Bremen University also, also here. And they will quickly and soon start their presentations. But before they do that, let me, dear friends, uh, briefly introduce to you some general things when it comes to studying in Germany. So there are two databases that you should know about. First of all, uh, if you are more interested in German taught programs, then we will suggest you to take a look at Hochschule Kompass. Um, if you, for example, go to there and you try to find programs which are related to biology or chemistry, you'll be able to find 742 degree programs, but only 158 will be in English language. But if you are more interested, and uh, I would like also Eileen uh, to ask Eileen to share this link in the chat, for Oxford Compass, which she already did. Thank you very much. And now, uh, if you are more interested in English taught programs, then I would say that my German university should your stop and our study finder to which Eileen already introduced you. So there, if you go to our study finder, uh, and Eileen, please also share link to study finder whenever you have time. So, uh, and you try to find degree programs that are related to biology and chemistry, you will be able to find 195 English taught programs. And interestingly, 155 of them will be English only. And we have also this division into there will be 100, 185 master and 10 bachelors. So English taught programs are interested, uh, interesting um, for you, then study finder is uh, your stop to say it <laughs> briefly. Also uh, how uh, we help international students that are making their first steps and first ideas about studying in Germany. So what should they do? We would suggest also to use our subject pages. For example, in this case, we have two subject pages separately for biology and chemistry. And when you go to the subject pages, you will see some general information about rankings of the universities that are offering these programs generally general tuition fee ranges, application admission requirements, again, the generally what are the language requirements that you may expect, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that provides you with general overview of what you would expect in this case, if you want to study this or that subject. Eileen, please also share these two subject pages whenever you can in the chat. Uh, our tip generally is the same. Uh, as we, I always repeat, so of course you have to uh, find, uh, search for universities according to university profile, according to study program, but don't be guided only by rankings. This is very often done by international students. Of course, those rankings are really nice rankings, international known rankings, and they, the universities that are in top places are well deserving there to be there. But sometimes these rankings do not catch all those details that are important to you as an international student. I mean, every one of us may have some different interests. So some, some of the rankings cannot catch these more most important details for us. That's why I would suggest you not be guided by rankings or not be guided only by uh, the cities that are the most popular, et cetera, et cetera. Because the important thing is that you have to enjoy your studies and you really need to do um, what you like and what according to your qualifications, etc. So this is something that we always say, suggest to our international students. 
And moving towards the end, I would also like you to know about generally two types of universities when it comes to Germany. So the first one is Universität or the university. And so when you, when you uh, go to our study finder and try to, for example, uh, find programs of biology or chemistry, and you want these programs to be offered exactly by Universität type of university, then you will be able to find 154 programs which is really cool. And yeah, these universities are also divided into two parts like public universities and private universities. Uh, and um, there's second type of universities that might be interesting for you is the University of Applied Sciences. In this case, again, it's division into public and private. And when you go to Study Finder and you want to find the programs in biology or chemistry or related programs, that are offered by exactly this type of university, you will be able to find 18 programs in this subject. And yeah, you can control, thanks to study finders, lots of filters you can control for what type of university, whether it's public or private, you can control for all these things. That's why I think it's really cool. And yeah, what is generally the difference between university and University of Applied Sciences? This is a really good question, if you would ask. And I would uh, put it briefly and say that before we used to say that University of Applied Sciences did not have this PhD level, but now it's not true because some of them do have. And the most important uh, difference I would say is in focus. So when it comes to university, uh, then the focus on more research and theory. And when it comes to University of Applied Sciences, the focus more is on application practice. This is something you should remember. And last but not least, um, one more suggestion from our side is that when you are searching for programs, let's say in biology or chemistry, it's not necessary that programs should be called like program only biology or only chemistry. There can be some variations, like for example, you can see some examples here like medical chemistry and chemical biology or bi biochemistry, or um, as we have today, uh, biochemistry. So it's not necessarily should be biology or chemistry. So um, uh, make your search a bit diversified so that you don't miss any programs that really might be the programs of your dreams or the programs that best fit, fit you the best. Okay, guys, uh, so now we are approaching the main part of our today's today's webinar. So a special, our first special guest is Professor Dr. Janine Kirstein, as I mentioned, from University of Bremen. She will, be present, she will uh, present master's program in biochemistry and molecular bio biology. And you can see where approximately to, to, to know where Bremen is. So uh, we are in the, <laughs> and we are, and University of Bremen is in the north of Germany. So close to Hamburg, uh, that's also quite popular city. So yeah, and uh, just so that you know, dear attendees, now uh, after uh, Professor Dr. Kirstein makes her presentation, uh, the floor will be open for her, uh, for the Q&A session. Okay, so now I'm stopping my screen share and I'm inviting uh, Professor to make her presentation. Thank you very much. I thank you. And I welcome everyone who are, who's interested uh, to study biochemistry and molecular biology in Bremen. Um, so my name is already was pointed out as uh, Janine Kirstein. I started actually this professorship two years ago. Um, and have been uh, appointed as a coordinator for this master program right away. So if you have any questions, I'm the coordinator, so I'm the main contact person. However, um, if you want to direct a question, you use please this email address here. Um, I'm sure the slides will be shared with you, to you. And I'll also direct you to this, um, to our website, because most of the questions I already see in the Q&A uh, are referring to, am I eligible um, to apply for master here? And those are all answered there, but I will go through them um, or go through those points as well. So as was also pointed out, um, the question is, where is Bremen? If you have not heard about it before, right? If you come from abroad, if this is the German map, then Bremen is located here. So it's pretty close to the um, North Sea, which I find uh, hugely attractive, but it's also close to the Dutch border. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of in a nice vicinity. It's a nice countryside. Bremen is about, together with Bremen Hafen, um, about half a million um, uh, inhabitants. So it's a medium-sized city for German standards. 
Um, what is Bremen um, also famous for? It's of course the town musicians. So you see them here. Uh, you may have heard about this uh, tale, and also it's you know as you can see it's really close to the North Sea for vacation. So I mean you can really go there on a weekend trip. It's uh, not that far away. It's a bit uh, an hour by car or by train to just go to the coast and enjoy it. So a few facts and figures. Um, the admission procedure is the following. So here's kind of like a rough guideline. We accept about 20 students. This is a kind of like a plus minus. So sometimes a few more, sometimes a few less. But it's uh, really not an issue if it doesn't go um, beyond kind of like, a, let's say, 25. And um, up to that, it's, it's fine. The application deadline is always January 15th. Um, so you know I get already a request kind of, you know, or email sent to me. Um, it doesn't matter yet, it's January 15th, um, and you have to pass certain tests, more to that later, and information about the test, how this will take place, how, what the procedure is like, it's a bit different now in Corona times, um, this is usually by the end of February. The written test takes place end of March, and you get feedback on the test if you passed it, and if you're welcomed um, to this um, program in April or May, and you then start um, in October. There's a certain delay in the presentation. No. So I have a bit of a struggle with this um, presentation. Okay. So the requirements. Um, you have to um, have, uh, you have to hold a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, biology, or any related field. Um, you should have at least 60 credit points in biochemistry, chemistry, molecular biology, and so on. Um, you should pass an English test according to C1 level. And you have to pass a written aptitude test. Uh, that is the test I was talking about here. If you want to get the sense for that, you know, what, what do we expect? It's actually, if you pass with uh, flying colors, your bachelor's, you're all fine, you're set. Um, if you want to get a few sample questions, look at our website and you will find them. So that you get the sense for what kind of like level are we aiming for. And then, of course, letter of motivation, why are you actually interested? So the skills uh, you will acquire here with us um, are kind of that we train you from day one uh, to become really someone who can think on its feet, who can um, solve problems. So you will get faced with, um, you know, kind of like a scientific problem and we will uh, guide you, but we will also give you the tools and teach you the tools and methods how to tackle a scientific problem. And a high emphasis is on interdisciplinary thinking. You will also be put uh, in a position that you write your own first grant proposal, which is on top of it also an interdisciplinary one. So that for instance, you take a biological question, but you have to use tools from engineering or from biophysics. Right. So and uh, it's not that we expect that from you from scratch, you will get taught. So you will get um, instructions on how to do that. You will hear about those techniques, but you have to basically be creative enough to come up with first a biological question and then also to figure out the right uh, tools. And then you work together with the respective groups um, to solve that. You will also uh, learn how to organize a symposium. Uh, you will basically also get the chance that you can invite speakers, that you have to set up a program, you have to announce it, so you have to do some marketing for that as well. Um, so that uh, you really run the whole show and invite us as professors to come there um, to see what you actually put up. Uh, there will also be an excursion to the island of Seoul. I mean, we have to take advantage that we are so close to the, um, to the coast that we um, can uh, use that. And this will be a trip to you know, to um, get to know each other a little bit better to work as a team. And uh, we will combine that, of course, also with scientific um, yeah, problems so that we do kind of like some tutorials, some workshops together. Um, so it's really uh, every single year is a little bit different what content is like. So we have a high priority on hands on um, practical courses, but also internships. So it's not uh, that it's uh, that you have classes all the time, but that you spend a lot of time in the labs. And what we actually implemented very recently is that we implemented a mentoring scheme, meaning that every student is paired up with a professor randomly, and this professor is there for you. So if you have a question about your studying, um, about your progress, if you have maybe some 
um, you know, challenges or insecurities or whatever, this professor is responsible for you, right? So you can turn to a certain person and ask kind of like for help and please use it. But it also goes beyond kind of if you face problems. And it's also meant that you have someone to uh, bounce off ideas or to think about the next steps, what comes actually, um, you know, after your master. Um, Am I cut out for a PhD program? Where should I go? What kind of like, where are my interests? So you get someone, you actually can um, discuss all that. Yeah, and the scientific focus of the BMB, so the Biochemistry Molecular Biology Research Labs is on glycobiochemistry, neurobiochemistry, neurodegeneration, diabetes, microbiology, and plants, genetics, and physiology, and many more. So now, really, uh, when, you know, Georgi was uh, explaining you um, or pointing out what you should focus on deciding where you want to go to do your master, the master programs in Germany are fantastic everywhere. But it's kind of like, I would strongly suggest that you look at this perspective labs, what kind of research is done? Um, is this something which is of interest to me? Because you will spend uh, time in lab rotations, but also in your master thesis in the respective lab. So truly matters um, if you can identify um, with this respective lab and can um, see yourself uh, doing such science. So here is a glance, you see an overview about the study structure. Of course, this is kind of like a lot um, um, at once, but I will go through now, I will um, go through each of the terms. So when you see it, first term, second and so on, it's basically the winter semester, summer semester, again the winter and again summer. So I will go through them. In the first term, we have two modules. Module A is that you get um, a basic understanding in biochemistry and molecular biology through lectures, seminars, um, uh, lab work, so that you learn all the, the basics um, to then specialize. And this comes in module B already. So in module B, you can already specialize and have a focus on uh, either bioorganic chemistry, on glycobiochemistry, biophysics, or applied microbiology. So here you can already specialize and set a certain focus. Yeah? So you have enough time to figure out actually what you want. Um, and uh, then this is the first kind of like turning point where you can um, have a certain focus. In the second term, I know this is again a lot of information, but what you actually should get from this slide is that uh, we have uh, two main branches. The first one is um, on microbial systems, so it has, has, has a heavy focus on uh, microbiology. And uh, you can pick any of these lab courses or what we call as a second branch, the integrative um, BMB. And that gives you more of a sense of the um, interdisciplinarity. So it's hugely diverse. So there were some questions about uh, bioinformatics. Yes, this is possible to do here in Bremen because we have also modeling groups who do some docking analysis and some simulations um, of, let's say, protein structures. So they do that and you can take part in such a course and learn all about that. And in the end, you can, um, you know, it's like Lego here. So you can pick any of them. And you have to cover three and you can pick them to your liking and um, take part in those uh, modules. In addition, and as in this, in this summer term, we have module C, which is project management, where you will learn how to prepare the, a symposium, but also how to set up, for instance, a class for bachelor students. So that you get into teaching, how to set up um, a class, how to provide background, what kind of tools you can implement to um, teach uh, bachelor students for one class. So it's not kind of like that we take advantage of you. It's more that you actually learn how, what is also a part of an academic career. And module F will take place. And this is a module which, um, you know, is uh, spanning for the whole semester. Here you actually start to write your first project proposal the one I mentioned that is highly interdisciplinary. So you work together with um, PIs from different labs. Um, you get feedback, how to write it. You will really pick it up from, from scratch and learn how to set it up. And in the end, you will defend that uh, in a symposium. You will defend it to your entire class, to your peers, but also to all the professors. And that takes place in uh, October, so it's, it's spanning for the whole summer. It doesn't mean that you're busy the whole summer, but you can take your time to develop this project proposal. So 
So now coming to the third term, so again, the winter term, we have here two lab rotations. So you spend time in a lab where you become a valid lab member. So you are treated as such. And for one of them, you uh, will also be able to set up um, a yeah, project present presentation um, in the form of a poster. So you may have heard at the scientific conferences, you present your data very often as a poster. And this is how you will learn it here in this master course. So you will set up a poster to present the data you obtained in one of the lab projects and you can choose which one um, to use for that. And finally, now we come to the fourth, um, it's your master thesis, um, the one that is probably um, the most, let's say, um, demanding in terms of it, uh, you spend most of the time doing that and is also um, where you will really uh, uh, have most of the time, but also not the skills to develop your own project um, and to accomplish or to kind of hopefully also finish a project. And with that, that actually concludes now the uh, layout of the master program. And I want to uh, use the remaining time to tell you a little bit, um, you know, what, what, this, what comes afterwards, right? What uh, do our alumni do? So here you see a few pictures of uh, graduates uh, from our master courses. You can see it's diverse. Um, they come from all over the world. Um, we have Germans, we have um, many of foreigners, really from literally everywhere. And what do they do afterwards? So more than 90% stay in academia, meaning that they pursue a PhD. But other career options are also there. For instance, uh, our alumni um, get into project management. Um, you have and now also got to know two other alumni who are part of my German university. So you see there's plenty more out there than just being, or just in uh, inverted commas, than uh, just following a, an academic track. Um, some others uh, were part of healthcare management or research assistance, um, that's absolutely um, possible as well. So where did they go next? Um, so 75% stayed in Germany, but those who explored a little bit more, they actually ended up again all over the world, many a big chunk in Europe, some other European countries, but then you also see how it's actually split up and it's um, uh, again quite um, diverse and truly really global, which I appreciate a lot. Yeah, and um, with uh, that, I leave you with a few impressions from our labs, from our um, instructors and students in the lab. And um, we hope to see you in Bremen. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the email address I provided in the beginning. Feel free to browse um, on the website because most of the questions regarding eligibility and all that will be addressed there. I thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take any more specific questions. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Kishtein, for this really interesting presentation. Quite a lot of questions, I would say, were answered by only this presentation already. And not being from the biology field, my, myself, I'm quite far from there, to be honest, but the, the models that you showed to me seemed really uh, diverse and quite intensive, which is really, really cool. And I think that this is really always appreciated by international students. So um, let me ask you maybe two questions. Uh, I'm sure these questions, if they go to write to email or go to the website, they might, might, might be already answered there, but still, because they were answered more or less several times. So you also mentioned during your presentation regarding the English level, if I'm not mistaken, it was C1. Correct. Um, so we often get this question, to be honest. So when the student, for example, has bachelor's level totally in English, mm -hmm. does she or he still have to provide like tests like IELTS or TOEFL or the similar? Yeah, you have to provide the test. If you come from an English native speaking country, then mm -hmm. this may be different. But, um, you know, I mean, you, you will know if you have done with your whole studying and in, 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 in your bachelor's in English, you will pass easily. So don't be afraid, just take the test and then you're <laughs> on the safe side. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, thanks for this answer. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, this is also one question, but really specific one, I would say. Uh, this uh, question, uh, as a person already asked it twice, so I will read it out to you. So can students do the written test for master's application in their home country for University of Bremen? Yes, you can. 
<laughs> famous <laughs> quote, right? Um, <laughs> absolutely. So we work together with, um, uh, let's say, uh, Goethe institutions and uh, DAAD and so on, so that they have kind of um, out uh, stations um, all over the world. Um, and uh, in the last two years, we actually offered also online tests because of this whole corona situation that traveling should not be uh, or should be extremely limited. So we didn't want to put um, you or the applicants under this pressure to kind of need to go somewhere where it actually may not be possible or pose kind of like certain health um, threats. So uh, when we implemented um, an online scheme where we actually uh, did these exams via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And that worked fairly well as well. So we will see what the situation is like in winter, but it's mm -hmm. absolutely possible. You don't have to come to Bremen to take the test. Great. So I think the <laughs> answers are really clear and no more questions are left in this regard. And I also promised one to ask you one question <laughs> from our, one of the attendees. So this person wanted to know, um, you mentioned about the background, what is necessary to to be uh, accepted to the program. And uh, this person asks whether any work experience, any particular amount of work experience is necessary to mm. be eligible for this program. Yeah. No, it's not necessary at all. So we mm -hmm. have um, also um, students that did the bachelor and didn't have much coursework. So it's really differs depending where you're from and where your home institution is. Um, also for the bachelor thesis, it's not common. It's common in Germany, but it's not common everywhere. Um, we don't have these requirements. So you will learn. So in the beginning, the learning curve might be extremely steep for you if you have not been in the lab much, but mm -hmm. you learn kind of like how to prepare, how to handle, um, yeah, I mean, solutions, reagents and all that to find your way around in the lab. But uh, we, we are aware of it and you're not alone. So we will teach you how to do it. Okay, great. So I, th I think it's really cool. I think you answered all this question really nicely and um, really <laughs> there are no more questions even to me left. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some more questions, but I would um, maybe suggest these people to send email. Correct. Um, so that yeah. we don't take a lot of your time for both of you from our guests. So dear friends, those who still have questions to which are for Professor Dr. Kirstein or general to this program, the email is already in the chat and it was already shared with you also in the beginning of the presentation. So you are more than welcome as was said by Professor herself to send these questions. And as you could see, you'll get really complete answers. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was really interesting, and I hope the students um, from our attendees will apply, and I, I have a feeling that they will. <laughs>